Mm-hmm. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another segment of The Last Word. I'm Dan Roberts, the publisher of The Vegas Voice, and our goal is to introduce you to all the people that are running for elected office. Once again, we're very lucky to have with us today Trish Nash, who is a candidate for Henderson City Council Ward 3. Trish, Thank you for taking the time to be here. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it, Dan. It is our pleasure. Last time we spoke about why you wanted to run, what your goals were and everything else. But what I'd like to do this time, Trish, if it's okay, is ask you some specific issues and really put your feet to the fire as to how come and why and what's your feeling on it. And the one that has really resonated with a lot of uh, tourists, with a lot of people, is there's no water. Every day you hear there's less and less water. Henderson keeps on building and building and building. I mean, it's been unbelievable. How do you put the two together? What do you do? Well, that's a it's a hot topic right now. Very, very hot. You know, it's been a topic. I moved here in the year 2000, and it, it has been a topic since the day I moved here. Um, my recollection was Henderson really started water conservation efforts in the early 2000s when I was here. And we started with um, regulated watering times, so on and so forth. But there were really never any real fines or anything real serious that took place that I was aware of for homeowners. And I will admit, you know, there's been times I've been guilty where I have a sprinkler that maybe was broken, wasn't aware of it, but nothing, nothing occurred. But um, we have to take some real strong measures. And I know the city right now is actually doing that. I was um, in a neighborhood and I saw a city of Henderson vehicle and the gentleman was taking pictures of some landscaping. So I stopped and I asked him, I said, excuse me, what are you doing? And he explained that he was taking pictures of an area where there was a broken uh, sprinkler that was uh, uh, leaving a lot of water, a lot, a lot, a lot of water. And he had gotten a complaint. So he was taking a picture. Then what he does, because I said, explain the procedure. So he will take a picture. He will then go to that homeowner, knock on their door, and uh, let them know that they have an issue with with the, the water, water waste. And if they're not home, he leaves a note. And then they have a certain period of time to correct that. It's actually quite um, a, a broad period of time, several months. And then if it's not taken care of, then they will receive a fine. So the city is implementing that right now. But as a city, we're going to have to make some really, really difficult decisions as we move forward with growth, because with growth comes more more water usage and um, residences, all of the water is uh, it is recycled. So that's not as big of an issue. The the water that is not recycled, that literally just goes and and, and evaporates is the uh, landscaping Trish, here's the question. It's one thing for residents to shut their water off or or shower quickly or shower with a friend or something along those (laughs) lines. But you see now in Sun City Anthem, they're ripping up all the landscaping. It's all good, taking away all the grass. And yes, it saves a lot of water, but is that going to be the future of Henderson, which is just plain rocks and no sight at all, no greenery? Well, I hate to say this, but that is our future. If we are going to conserve water, we have to make difficult decisions. And that was a decision that the state made. And so effective um, by the year 2027, January of 2027, all unused landscaping, unused turf needs to be removed. So in other words, if the only feet on that grass is a landscaper and it's not used for whether it's a ballpark or a dog park, or something useful, or a golf course, um, that is going to have to be removed. But I have seen some beautiful uh, desert landscaping. So I think that there's some things that we can do. Um, I My office is located in Cadence, and they are starting to remove the turf as well. So we're starting to see these in a lot of different communities. And um, unfortunately, we're going to have to embrace it if we want to have enough water for our future. We have enough water now. Mm -hmm. And I'm told there's different versions you hear. Some people will say we have at least eight years. Some people say we have 12 years, three years. Um, But we do have enough water. And I believe for for us, we have enough water for our lifetime. But we have to think about what's going to happen in the future. But another thing this affects, as a real estate broker, I have people that do their research online. They see, oh, Nevada, no water. Clark County, no water. They make a decision not to move here because they're afraid that they're not going to have water. 
And it also can affect our home values sure. because if we have people not wanting to move here because of the fear of, of lack of water, then that will impact all of us who own homes. You know, and it, let me give you another topic now that just came in the news, unfortunately, is that you hear these terrible school shootings and you, they're horrific. And I can't imagine anything worse than a parent sending their child, elementary school child, to school and getting that news. And as an elected official with the city council, I mean, that really hits home. We're talking about, God forbid, it happens to a school in Henson. Have you, have you, have any, have you have any thoughts on that? I do. Um, well, the, the, what happens within our local schools really is, is, a, is a school board issue. However, we can certainly have a voice and we care about our community and what happens in our community impacts all of us. So city council members do care greatly about this. Um, if, you, if you listen to what happened yesterday, the 18-year-old the kid jumped over the fence. He got in the back door that was unlocked. Mm -hmm. So it was unsecure. Um, we have issues right within our Clark, Clark County school system where we have violence happening. And I just don't believe that there's enough control. And there, I believe there needs to be more security within our schools because it hasn't happened yet, but it could happen right within our own backyard. So we need to be very, very mindful and really looking very closely within our own neighborhoods and our own schools, I should say, behind the doors of our schools. So I, I believe that as a result of this, at least I hope, that uh, CCSD is going to take a long, hard look at the security measures happening within their own schools. But it has to take place because, as you well know, there's always the copycats. Yep. And, and, yeah. and if you look at it, it's typically there's it's mental health issues and it's typically somebody young and distraught. So these are things that we have to look at long and hard. And um, it's it's a travesty, but it could happen right here in Clark County. And we certainly don't want that to happen. And now that as you get closer and closer to early voting, I mean, this is crunch time. <laughs> Here, this is it now. This yeah. is it. Here's the thing for our senior readers people who are watching The Last Word, okay, make your pitch right now for seniors. They should vote for Trish Nash, City Council, Ward 3, because. Because I want to protect our community, our home values. I want to ensure that we don't have issues where we are, for example, water. The water prices are going to go up. Everything is going up. Mm -hmm. Now, as a city council person, I can't, I can't impact inflation. I can't make an impact on gas prices. But I can have a say-so right within our community. And I want to ensure that we have an affordable community because seniors are on a very, very strict budget. And I'm, I'm out there talking to seniors on a daily basis through my campaign. And they're concerned about that. They're concerned about the cost of living. And I want to ensure that we have a community that has resources for them because we have a growing senior community. And uh, I just talked to a gentleman that, uh, that lives at a active adult community, uh, which are becoming more and more prevalent. Mm -hmm. And when I say an active adult community, I'm not talking about Sun City Anthem. I'm talking about a, a community in which it's more of... Um, condo apartment living mm -hmm. where everything is included and we need more of those and that's one of the things that i would like to see happen as seniors start to see the cost of living and the cost of maintaining a home and the cost of water and electric and all these prices are going up i think we may see a trend of seniors wanting to get rid of the 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 anchor which is their home and live in a community where um, these things are taken care of for them. And they don't have to worry about that. So that's one of the things that I'd like to see happen. Healthcare. We need better healthcare in our community. We have a, a hospital that's being built in West Henderson. That's very close to Sun City Anthem. That's going to be a good thing for seniors, but we need to make sure that we have uh, adequate healthcare and, and good doctors in our community. And the only way we're going to attract good doctors and good nurses and good healthcare workers is if we have a community that attracts them and they're not they're not afraid to move here because we don't have water 
or they can't afford to move here because our housing prices are so high or rental prices are so high. So there's a lot of things that we can do as a community that will attract these individuals that will be there for the seniors. And these are, these are items that the seniors need. And in the few moments that we have left, people want more information right before they vote. How do they find out about Trish Nash? Well, I have a website, voteforTrishNash.com, and all of my information is there. Um, my platform items, my contact information, and they can go to social media, look for Vote for Trish Nash. Uh, would love them to look me up. My phone number's there. Uh, they can call me. They can email me. I've gotten a lot of questions as we get closer to the election, and I answer all the calls and emails. And if for whatever reason I missed one, it was not intentional because I take all hard questions as well as the easy ones. And I just want to I want to be a voice. I want to be an ear for the voice out there. I want people to know that they can come to me and they can um, tell me their concerns and I will do everything I can to address them. Trish, I, again, I thank you for being here. We wish you the best of money. Thank you, Dan. And this is Dan Roberts for the last word, reminding you that if you don't vote, you don't get a voice. <laughs>